Hi, I'm Jeff O'Brien. I've been here at the Ronald McDonald House with my wife, Clara, and our daughter, Lydia, for the past six months. Our, our son, Samuel, was born um, just about six months ago, and uh, we've been um, really blessed to be here. This has been a great experience for our family, and uh, the uh, food service has been a really large component of that for us. We've um, really benefited from being able to you know, have ready meals for us every day um, and be able to take us, take it with us to the hospital or, or um, if we go for a picnic or things. It's been a really wonderful uh, part of, um, of our stay here. And we thank you all very much. Hi, welcome to Served With Love. I'm your host, Jared Johnson. Today's episode is sponsored by Emerson. Today we're back outside and going to use our grills again, but today we're going to put a Mexican twist on things and do elote, aka Mexican street corn. And we're also going to do some grilled salmon with an ancho chili rub. So we're back outside, we're going to use our grills again today, and it's midsummer, and for me, midsummer means corn and tomatoes. So we're gonna highlight corn and tomatoes today, but do a Mexican twist on things. So to get started today, we're just gonna take our ancho chili rub that we have here. And ancho chili is a chili powder. It's a chili, chili pepper, that gets ground into a powder. But this chili pepper is not particularly spicy, but it's smoked. And so we're gonna play up on the smokiness of that ancho chili pepper. And in addition, we have some smoked paprika in this rub with garlic and salt and onion powder and some other things. But that smokiness is really gonna play up nice with the citrus from the lemon and the sweetness from the tomatoes. So we're gonna put our ancho chili rub all over our salmon. We're gonna make sure that we don't touch the salmon with the same hand that we're putting into our ancho chili rub so that we don't contaminate the rub because we're also going to use this on our corn. We have our beautiful Lynx grill set up. Thank you so much to Lynx grills for donating these grills. They're awesome and we use them all summer long. We have this set up for direct cooking on high heat. So we're nice and high right here and we're just going to put our salmon down. The fillet side down first and we're going to put it on a 45 degree angle to the grates because in a couple of minutes, we're gonna give these a quarter turn. And that quarter turn is really gonna to help to enhance the grill marks and our final presentation. So we're gonna take a little bit more of our ancho chili rub and just put that on the other side of the salmon because we wanna make sure that our salmon's gonna taste good on both sides. We'll close that, let that go. I'm gonna wash my hands and put on fresh gloves and then we're gonna get the corn going. All right, so we have our salmon seasoned well on both sides. For a piece of salmon like this, it takes about three or four minutes per side. This has been on for about two minutes. So what we're gonna do now is just gonna take this and give it a quarter turn so we can really pick up those nice grill marks. And now we're gonna take our corn. I have another section of the grill lit right here. This is on medium heat. And we're just gonna take our corn and set that down and start to get a nice char on our corn as well. All right, so our salmon is about halfway done. We're just gonna flip that over so it can finish its cooking on the other side. Ah, oh, look at those beautiful grill marks. Awesome. Corn's going. We're just gonna let that finish up. And we have another part of the grill set up over here with no heat on it. So if our salmon is done before our corn's done, we're just gonna move our salmon over to the colder side of the grill. It'll stay nice and warm without fear of overcooking. And then we'll put it all together. Okay, so while our salmon and corn is finishing up, we're gonna put together some pico de gallo. Uh, so pico de gallo is a condiment, uh, very much like a relish or a bruschetta a salsa, uh, but it's a chunky in style. Everything is hand cut and it has a great balance of salty and spice and citrus. Um, and so that's really gonna work well, like I said, with that ancho chili powder that's on top of the salmon. So to start with our pico de gallo, we're gonna take some plum tomatoes. And what I like to do with the plum tomatoes is take the fillets off of the plum tomatoes. So we're not putting any of the jelly or the seeds that's inside the tomato into the pico de gallo. So to do that, you take the top of the tomato and you just cut that off, you set that aside. Then you put your tomato on its flat side down 
and you take your knife and just go about a quarter of an inch under the surface to remove the filet. And you can see that the jelly on the inside stays intact and you're just getting the body of the tomato. Takes me about five cuts usually for a plum tomato to get all the filets. This can be discarded or you can put it in stock for later if you're doing veggie stock. And what we're gonna do is dice these filets down. So I lay them on their flat side down and we're just gonna julienne the tomato. Each cut is about a quarter inch from the previous cut and we'll end up with about a quarter inch dice. We have some here that was already done. So we're gonna put that in the bowl. We have some onions here that were already done. These are beautiful spring onions, red onions. They're a little bit sweeter than a Spanish onion. Really great for this. I think we'll put them all in there. And so now here comes the spice. We're gonna use jalapenos for this dish. I think for this amount of pico de gallo, we're gonna use two jalapenos. So for the jalapeno, you don't wanna use the seeds because the seeds could give people indigestion. The seeds are also a lot of where the, of the extreme heat is in the jalapeno. So we're gonna take the seeds out. A Couple of seeds get in there, it's okay. Some of the pith gets in there, that's okay too. But you wanna to try to get most of it out. Jalapenos can fool you. Sometimes they're like the spiciest pepper you can imagine. Other times they're like a regular green pepper. So when you're adding jalapenos into something, it's good to get a quick taste on the jalapeno so you know how spicy they are before you're putting it into the dish. So just like the tomatoes, we're gonna do a julienne first and then we're gonna do a fine dice. This is really gonna be nice. They smell super fragrant and fresh. I'm gonna give it a quick taste. Yeah, they're really not very spicy at all. It's just gonna give some moderate spice, which is actually good for the families here. We don't wanna make things too spicy, but there's always things like sriracha and hot sauce and other things that people can put in if they want a little bit of extra heat. So our salmon is just about done, but our corn is not quite done yet. So we're gonna take our salmon and we're gonna move it over to the cold part of the grill so it's ready for us when we need it. And you see it's, uh, perfectly cooked, nice grill marks on the front. The salmon is starting to flake off. It's really looking good. Now, when you go to move your salmon off of the grill, if the tongs, if it feels like it's sticking a little bit, you can have a spatula with you too. Best to have a thin spatula like this if you need assistance to get it off the grill if you're concerned about it falling apart. I don't think this is going to fall apart. You just kind of need to give it a quick jostle and it should come right off. We'll move that over to the cold side. So now with our other tongs here, we're just going to give our corn a turn. You see that's starting to get a nice char on it. And we'll just let that finish up there. Okay, so we're just going to finish up our pico de gallo now. We have our tomatoes, onions, and jalapenos in the bowl. And I have a little bit of fresh cilantro here. I have some uh, tender stems and leaves. And we're just going to kind of mound all this up and just give it a quick chop. And this cilantro is going to go right in there. This fresh herb cilantro adds so much to the pico de gallo gives it a great freshness some people love it some people hate it but i think that this is super essential for pico de gallo that's going to go into the bowl get all that in there so now we're just going to take the juice of probably need a, ju a lime and a half maybe two limes to release the juice in the limes you just want to roll it out a little on your cutting board Make sure that you're gonna get all of that juice out of there when you get a squeeze. Cut this in half, throw all that in there. These limes are really nice and juicy. And I think it'll be a lime and a half total that we'll use. And to this, we'll add a little bit of black pepper. Some fresh salt, kosher salt. We're just gonna give this a stir. 
Look at those colors. Really nice dice on the onions and tomatoes. Everything is uniform in shape and size. So that's looking pretty good right there. Just give this a quick taste. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. You can add a little bit of vegetable oil if you like. It kind of gives it a glossy texture, but I think this is just right the way that it is. Okay, so our corn is just about ready. We're gonna take another look at it. Oh yeah, that's looking perfect. Beautiful char. It's just about done. Got a little more char on the front than the back, so I'm gonna switch these in place so they can finish going. That's gonna take just about a minute more, and we'll finish our mayonnaise sauce. So I have a little mayonnaise here. Just gonna take some mayonnaise and put it in our bowl. I'm gonna take a little bit of that ancho chili rub and the juice of one lime. Again, these limes are so juicy, I'm probably only gonna use a half a lime for this amount. This is so good and it's not heavy and it's not super rich, it's just absolutely delicious. All right, so our corn's just about ready here. I'm gonna show you how I like to finish this up. So we'll take our corn off the grill. Oh, look at that, beautiful char, fully cooked. Awesome. I'm gonna use a spreader and just spread this on all over the corn. You wanna get full coverage. So we got the mayonnaise mixture all over it. So now I have some cotija cheese. Cotija cheese is just a white, soft cheese that we've grated here. And we're just gonna put this right on top of the mayonnaise and corn, all around. So it gets full coverage. Okay, so everything's done. Now let's just put it all together. So we'll grab our salmon here. Beautiful. And we take our pico de gallo. I like to do this liberally. It's so good for you. We'll put some lime quarters with it and some fresh cilantro leaves for our corn. And finally, just a little dusting of that ancho chili spice. And there it is, elote Mexican street corn and ancho rubbed grilled salmon with pico de gallo. So that's today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I also wanna give a special thanks to Emerson for sponsoring today's episode. Thank you so much for being a sponsor for today's episode. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your summer and get out there and do some grilling. Stay tuned for next week when we're gonna take you back inside and introduce you to Patrick, Chef Patrick, who works in the kitchen, who's our resident pickle expert. We're gonna do a pickle show. If you'd like to sponsor an episode or donate to our food services program, please visit www.phillarmh.org slash Chef Jared. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. This episode of Served with Love was sponsored by the Emerson Group. We'd also like to thank Lynx Grills for providing the grills out on our patio. Samuels and Sons Seafood for providing the fresh salmon we used in today's recipe. And Giordano's Garden Groceries for providing all of the produce that we use on our show. For ingredients, recipes, and information on how you can support our food services program, please visit us on the web at www.phillarmh.org slash Chef Jared. You can also contact me with any questions by email at chefjared at phillarmh.org. Thank you.